When you don't feel like it, continually declare. Even in the face of failure, lift your voice and say, Jesus is my Lord. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. I am redeemed. I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm not going to let this slip. I'm going to hold fast to it. And my confession of faith always leads to my salvation and my deliverance. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, open up to the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. And uh, this morning we're going to talk about uh, holding fast to your confession of faith. Holding fast to your confession of faith. And we'll uh, try to continue some of this in the next service because I don't know if we can finish it up here in this service. But we'll get started. In uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 have your Bible. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Let us hold fast our profession. If you have an amplified Bible, it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith in Him. So he says, Seeing then that we as Christians, as believers, we have a great high priest, a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, here's our job. Our job is to hold fast our profession. The Amplified says, hold fast the confession of our faith in Him. So this morning we want to talk about our confession of faith, the importance of our confession of faith. And here he says, let us hold fast to it. Hold fast. Actually, uh, the word here, hold fast, is literally just the word hold twice. Hold twice. That means hold, hold. That means hold tight. That means don't let it slip. That means don't let it get away from you because our confession of faith, or here our profession, is essential to us enjoying our salvation our deliverance from the devil and the powers of darkness, but also our enjoyment of the blessings of the Lord. So he says we should hold fast, double grip. I call it get a grip on your lip. Hold fast to our confession, same word, profession, and the same word, confession. Anybody know why? Well, I wondered why. He uses the word profession in Hebrews. And yet, this is the same word that's used in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. So, look at Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Same word, profession, and the same word, confession. And he, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, this is the word, confession, and this is the confession of our faith. Many times when we talk about confession, people think of the confession of sin or failure or what's wrong in their life. But literally, the Bible has so much more to say about our confession of faith than it does our confession of failure. And we're going to look here at the initial confession of faith as a Christian. What is the initial beginning confession of our faith? Romans chapter 10. Do you have that? Romans chapter 10. Here's what it says. It says that if thou shalt confess. That's the same word right there as used in Hebrews 4.14. That if thou shalt what? Confess with your mouth, thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. He said, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, our confession of faith actually is made unto or precedes our salvation. Same word as profession, same word as confession. The word confession simply means to say the same thing, or it means to agree with, or it means to acknowledge. To confess, 
to profess the initial confession of our faith concerning the lordship of Jesus Christ, that he is Lord. He said it is that confession which many theologians actually call this the great confession. The great confession. In other words, the greatest confession in all of this world is when you and I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That confession of faith that he is Lord simply notifies the devil that his dominion over your life is broken, that Satan can no longer dominate you, that sin can no longer dominate you, that old habits can no longer dominate you, that depression cannot dominate you, sickness cannot dominate you. Amen. In other words, when you're declaring Jesus is Lord, he is my Lord, that confession, he said, is made unto salvation. But notice what Hebrews says. He says, hold fast to our profession. In other words, it's not enough just to say that once. That means we must constantly be in agreement with our words and keep saying the same thing. No matter how you feel, no matter how things look, no matter what's going on in your life, if you will hold fast to your confession of faith, that confession will always produce salvation. Salvation means deliverance, safety, healing, preservation, and soundness. I like to say the devil is just as afraid of your confession as he is of what Jesus did when he was raised from the dead. In other words, your confession or our confession actually is what makes that a reality in our life. So Paul says, hold fast to it. Don't let it go. Anybody know why he uses the word profession in Hebrews and yet confession here in Romans 10? Actually, the reason he uses the word profession is because the Greek word homologia actually means to say the same thing, but it means a little bit more than just something you say. It literally means a lifestyle, a profession. In other words, that means when you hold fast to your profession that Jesus is your Lord, then you are living a lifestyle of faith in what Christ has done for you and who you are in Christ. A lifestyle means you have become a professional. A professional means your confession. Now, your faith has become and is your profession. What is a profession? Well, I always like to think of it this way. What's the difference between a professional and an amateur? A lot of difference. I said there's a lot of difference, several things. One is a professional can make a living at it, and an amateur needs to keep his regular job. <laughs> that means you may be a good golfer, but if you can't make a living at it, you can only play on the weekend. <laughs> but if you're a professional, you can make a living, then every day you're a professional at golf because you're good enough to make a living at it. And there's a lot of Christians, come on, that are only amateurs at faith because they only practice it on the weekends. But if you want to be a professional at faith, then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you get up in the morning and you say, I am a professional at faith. That means I pay a great deal of attention to the details. I mix faith with everything I do, and also I am known in my community for this. I am a Christian. Jesus is my Lord. I am redeemed. Christ has redeemed me, and I am saved, and I am whole and fast to my profession of faith. That's your confession. That's your profession. And apparently this is the confession that breaks the power of the devil. It is the confession, amen, that opens the door and leads to deliverance and salvation. So that's why in Hebrews he says, don't let it slip. Don't let go of it. Hold fast to it. Always be conscious of your profession. If you're a professional at it, if you're a professional, that means you even show up when you don't feel like it. Are y'all still here? I mean a professional 
Come on. They're showing up all the time because they're a professional at it. When you don't feel like it, continually declare. Even in the face of failure, lift your voice and say, Jesus is my Lord. I am washed in the blood of Jesus. I am redeemed. I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm not going to let this slip. I'm going to hold fast to it. And my confession of faith always leads to my salvation and my deliverance. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Amen. When he says hold fast to it, hold fast, that means hold on tight. There must be a reason for that. That must mean that life and circumstances, even the devil's going to challenge that confession. Your experience, your feelings will challenge. But he said, don't turn loose of this confession. Actually, if you'll hold fast to your confession, it won't be long till the feelings will follow. Amen. Amen. When he says hold fast to it, the, the example I get is I go to uh, Calgary, Canada every year, and I preach up there at a wonderful church. But I always plan to go right when they're having the Calgary stampede. <laughs> that pastor up there, he said, would you please come to my church? I said, on one condition. I'll come during the four days of the Calgary stampede, and we'll take one day off and go to the rodeo. Now, that may not be very spiritual, but it is a lot of fun. So, <laughs> so we go to the Calgary stampede every year, and this past year we took Trenna's mom and dad, and his 80th birthday, and so uh, he was so happy. His, his dream was always to go to Calgary Stampede because when her dad was young, he was a wild bronc rider, bareback rider. So he's up there in the stands, and he's just telling us all the reasons why that some of them held on and why some of them fell off making commentary, our own personal commentary. So, so Dad Beerman's up there. Well, we're up there, and my favorite part of the rodeo is the bull ride. I love the bull ride. And those eight seconds, I always tell people, if you think your life is going by too fast, take up bull riding, because <laughs> those eight seconds will slow your life down, really. I mean, it seems like forever, those eight seconds. But when you see that cowboy get on that bull, he's challenging that bull, and they get the big screen, uh, screen TV, you know, and they, they focus in on that cowboy, and he's not in a hurry. He jumps on that bull, and then he starts to wrap that rope in his hand. And when he wraps that rope in his hand, then they get that big TV screen and they bring that camera right in on him, on that bull, and he wraps that rope in there and he wraps it in there. And if you don't have it right, he backs it off and he starts it again and he wraps it again. And he gets his hand in there and he smashes his hand. He goes, burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Anybody know why he does that? <laughs> Did I say do that? Anybody know why he does that? <laughs> That's what you'd say if you was on that bull. Doesn't anybody know why he does that? Anybody know why he does that when he smashes his hand on there? He's fixing to go for a ride. Paul says, when you are saved and make Jesus your Lord, he said, wrap that confession of your faith, get a grip on that, hold on tight, because you're fixing to go for a ride. That means your circumstances and the devil and everything going to try to throw you off. You say, I'm whole and fast to my confession of faith. I'm not going to turn loose of it. I'm not going to let it go. I have prepared for this ride. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you get thrown off, God will help you get right back on and wrap it back up again and hold fast. So he says, hold fast to your confession. Look at somebody and say, you're fixing to go for a ride. <laughs> In other words, there's no such thing as unchallenged faith. Your feelings and your circumstances, and even when it comes to divine healing, the moment you confess that by Jesus' stripes you were healed, hold fast to that. That means daily make that confession that the Lord forgives all of your iniquities and he heals all of your diseases. That means constantly be conscious of your confession and hold fast. Don't turn it loose. Don't let it go. Don't let it slip. 
Hold fast to it. Amen? This confession, which is the initial confession of every Christian, that Jesus is my Lord. There must be more in this than we understand. Let's go over that one more time. I said there must be more in this than we understand. In other words, something so significant happened when you believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead. Something happened in the resurrection of Christ. When you agree with that and you confess that Jesus is Lord, what does that word mean? He is the master. He is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe. That means that Jesus has faced every challenge. He has won every battle. He has left nothing out. He is Lord. The Bible says he's Lord of the dead. He's Lord of the living. He's Lord of the seen. He's Lord of the unseen. He's Lord in heaven. He's Lord in the earth. And the Bible says when you confess Jesus as Lord, it even registers in hell. Jesus is my Lord. You serve notice on the devil that I have been delivered from the power of darkness. Hold fast to that. He said, that confession is made unto salvation. Let me give you several keys about the confession of your faith real quickly here. Now, all right, I'll give you these. Are you ready? Number one, confession, one writer said this, I think it's E.W. Kenyon said, confession builds the road over which faith carries its mighty cargo. In other words, there's no faith without a confession of faith. In other words, you cannot understand faith without understanding the power of your confession. In other words, your confession is essential to your faith. So E.W. Kenyon said it this way. He said, confession builds the road over which faith carries its mighty cargo. In other words, God's got some big stuff he wants to deliver to your house. But confession is what builds the road. While you're confessing the word and confessing what the blood of Jesus has done for you, while you're speaking and declaring who you are in Christ, I like to say you become a professional at your confession, then your confession will become your possession. In other words, you pay attention to it. So while you're confessing that, somebody say, what are you doing? You say, I'm, I'm working on a road. I'm building a road because if your confession is weak or small or only intermittent, then you will live with an intermittent experience of salvation or you'll live with just a small measure of what's been provided for you. Or if you just have a small path, God can't get anything to you but what he can get on a small little motorcycle. But if you'll build the road, you can make a two-lane, a four-lane, a six-lane, an eight-lane road. And God said, I got some big tractor trailers with some big trucks, and I'm going to bring some stuff right to your house. In other words, your confession builds the road. So if the devil can hinder your confession, stop your confession. Come on, then the road is out, and God said, I'm trying to get it to you, but I need you to confess, to agree with to say the same thing, even when you don't feel like it. I want you to say the same thing that the Word says about you. Say the same thing that Jesus has done for you. It's not enough just to think it. It must be declared. You must say it. Say it out loud, say it often, and say it every day. Matter of fact, you should have a list of confessions of faith and go over them every single day. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. A pioneer goes where no one has gone before, blazing a trail so that others may follow. A pioneer must know two things so that they can keep moving, what to take and what to leave behind. The Lord says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. It is time for us to forget the past, keep moving forward, and possess new territory. We'd like to offer you this four CD set titled, The Spirit of Faith, Pioneer Advance. These messages will help you understand the importance of Pioneer Advance, Faith is an Act, God is Doing a New Thing, and Barrier Breaking Faith. 
Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's Word, moving your mountain, and overcoming adversity and any challenge you face today. You will also receive Pastor Mark's book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural. Believing and speaking will open the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. Your confession of faith brings you into the consciousness of who you are in Christ. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, it connects you to the victory in Jesus. Get the book and CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and serve as our new television studio. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, and the set of four CDs of the Spirit of Faith, Pioneer Advance. You can also download the MP3s of these messages in our app for free. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. I love something that my dad always says is the simplest form of faith is acting like the Bible is true. And a lot of times in our lives we think, you know what? I, I don't know exactly how I'm going to move forward. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do but I do know what I'm going to do in this situation. The one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to act like the Bible is true. I'm going to act like everything the Bible promises me is the truth. And that means that I'm going to get happy and I'm going to get excited because I know that I have promises in the word. So there may be things that you're facing in your life right now and you may have challenges and you may have the devil in your ear saying, what are you going to do? I want to tell you something. You don't have to answer all the questions that the devil puts in your mind because he's going to put a lot of questions in your mind and try to put a lot of fear in your mind about the things that you're going through and about the outcome. And he will say, what are you going to do? I encourage you to say, I am going to act like the Bible is true. And if the Bible is true, his promises are for me. And I'm going to come out on the other side of this in truth and victory. I encourage you today to get faith opens the door to the supernatural. This will strengthen your faith. This will encourage you to do the exact same thing. Just act like the Bible is true. Take the pressure off of you. The pressure is on God. He made the promise. He's going to perform it. All you have to do is believe it. I encourage you to get this book today. Faith opens the door to the supernatural. You know, your gift of any amount helps us get this word out and it helps us get these books translated into different languages. So if you would like to be a partner today, go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen. Thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you next time. My name's Kevin Burns. This is my wife, Elizabeth, and we live and pastor in Lake Charles, Louisiana. I grew up here, you know, my, my family's been a part of the church here for probably 30 something years, a long, a long time. Well, so, your parents were friends with yeah, Pastor Yeah, my parents, Pastor you know, my whole family got saved here. Uh, my mother grew up Baptist, but started hearing, standing on the Word of God, yeah. standing in faith and claiming your family and uh, for the, the gospel and that they're going to be saved, you know, so the, really the message of faith that she learned here, she stood upon that revelation mm -hmm. and we all got saved, right? I got saved, my brother, my sister, my dad, we all got saved. And then upon that, then we all attended here, grew up here, I went to Bible college here. So uh, we've known them intimately, you know, personally, not and also uh, as pastors. So we could never, I could never say enough. There was a, a time uh, whenever, like in our marriage, mm -hmm. where we had busted up, right, she left me. <laughs> we had a lot of disagreements. We had a lot of disagreements, way. right? <laughs> or, so yeah. we, there was a point in our life, in our marriage, where we split up, we yeah. busted, you know, we, we separated. So I never forget, I called Pastor Mark in the middle of the night and I said, she's moving out. She is, 
she is done with me, she's leaving. And he said, hey, be at my office at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So we showed up at his office, Pastor Trina was there. And I said, you know, we're having a hard time getting along and she's moving out. And he said, let's just pray. And I'll never forget this, because mm -hmm. then he just prayed and we just prayed in the Holy Spirit for 15 minutes probably, mm -hmm. just prayed in the Holy Spirit, which is pretty unique. You know, a lot, most people don't start their counseling. They'll maybe open with a little prayer, but like Pastor Mark was like, hey, let's just pray. So he just prayed in the Holy right Spirit there. for yeah. 15 minutes and then uh, just talked to us and counseled us. And by the end mm -hmm. of the meeting, uh, things were a lot better, right? We still took time. We, you know, she moved. To Baton Rouge yeah, and but I something in here. my heart changed and that um, I'll never forget now that you mentioned that in that time with you know we were they were taking personal time with us and we were having a crisis right there in that moment and for them to reach out and to take us in really pull us in I remember in that time though in that meeting um, there was a change in my heart that and I know that it was just through that relationship that with Pastor Mark and Pastor Trina um, that there was some some guidance and some covering, you know, that through that relationship we have, they are such a covering and such a um, an avenue that the Lord uses to speak to us, to encourage us, to redirect us at times, to bring correction when needed. And so that relationship to us is so precious. It is something that we guard and that we treasure because the Lord, when I mean, He speaks to us, that's an avenue where we receive from God. Well, that's just one time, you know, my yeah. dad got cancer. Pastor Mark would come in off of the road, go, he's out preaching, 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 you know. He, when he was in town, he would be at my, at my mother and father's house at 5 a.m. He'd be there praying with my dad, praying the Holy Spirit for an hour you know, and counsel and sit there with my dad, encourage my dad, and did that not once, but multiple times. Mm -hmm. So between our own marriage and then with my family, mm -hmm. uh, we've been uh, inside the ropes with them for decades. Worked in the Blessing. office alongside them, been in their home multiple times. It's always been a privilege and an honor. Yeah. But at the whole to totality of it is he's always consistent. He's always faithful. He's so faithful. generous yeah. to his own hurt. He's merciful with people that I would not be as merciful with. <laughs> he is, he's, he's extremely loyal to people that have been disloyal, right? So it's always been uh, our uh, desire is to reciprocate and just be there and love him and love them. And uh, not just them, but their whole family, the kids, the grandkids and all that. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching.